Hi, I'm Deborah, and this is in memory of my parents, Meiti Bestov at Beryl and Kasriel Ben Yeldov Bear. So we're heading into Rosh Hashanah. We have Shabbos, and then Sunday night is Rosh Hashanah. So I wanted to talk a little about the Shea, the Shai Fair. So when is the first time that a ram's horn was mentioned in Jewish history? And that was a Kedas Yitzchak, the binding of Yitzchak. However, even though there was a ram in the bushes, the ram wasn't used. However, when was the first time it was used? At Matan Torah, at the giving of the Torah, the shofar was blown. We were all there, all the generations to come forward after were there and we heard the shofar and it has had an impact in our lives since then. So on Rosh Hashanah, when the shofar is blown, it renews the creative energy that sustains the world. Era of Rosh Hashanah, Hashem withdraws his light and with the blowing of the shofar, a new energy comes down. It's cyclical. It's a higher energy. It's a deeper energy. It's a totally different quality of energy. So he renews this energy, which is totally amazing. And also the shofar, the cry of the shofar reminds us of the cries and the tears that were shed for the Holy Temple in Jerusalem during its destruction. And also the cry of the shofar hastens to bring Mashiach and it hastens the rebuilding of the Beis Amikdash. And there's so much more that it does. So there are three different sounds of the shofar, Takia, Shavarim, Terua, and then it ends with another Takia. So what does Takia represent? So it's a very long blast and it's a burst of empowerment. And the Zohar says, this is connected to Abraham, to Chesed. And through this burst, we have the ability to lift ourselves up and to coronate Hashem as king. Hashem, the master of the universe, through this, we can coronate him. This is an, as, is an expression of joyful state of closeness to Hashem. Then comes the Shavarim. And this is reminiscent of Yaakov, who was more from Gavora. So the Shvarim represents the brokenness in our life. We might begin life confident, but through life we experience struggle and obligations and things that don't work. Struggle, and then we have fragmentation. So the shvarim, the th three bursts, echo an inner brokenness and lack of balance. And then we come to Teruwa, which is six short little blasts. And this says it's the breaking of the chunks, the chunks of shvarim into smaller chunks that become dust. And after that, the final takia, which is different than the first takia, the final takia is joy. It's straightening out life. It's returning to wholeness. It's a new beginning. It's revealing ourselves. We are resilient and we get up and we do life again. 
So what is our kavana when we hear the shofar? Our kavana is, it's very simple on a certain level, that we are filling, fulfilling, we are fulfilling Hashem's will through this mitzvah. By listening to the shofar, simplistically, we are fulfilling Hashem's will. And one other positive thing that is attributed to shofar, it's, it brings a softness, a sweetness into the judgment of the year. So may we open our hearts, open our souls, open ourselves to just receive all the benefits and hear the voice of Hashem resonating within us. A good gebench jure, revealed brachas on every level, and may we dance into the gaula.